What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So, for this upload, I wanted to talk to you about the distinctions between an abundance mindset and a scarcity mindset. So, first of all, let's define each one. A scarcity mindset is a mindset or a thought process that there isn't enough okay so let me repeat that again a scarcity mindset or a thought process is that there isn't enough as you can see it is inherently very pessimistic and negative okay on the other hand an abundance mindset is a mindset that there is always more there's always more to come so let me repeat that again an abundance mindset or a thought process is that there is always more or there is more to come and inherently this mindset is optimistic okay now the difference between somebody that has a scarcity mindset and somebody that has an abundance mindset is really just outlook on life, okay? An individual that has an abundance mindset will be motivated to pursue certain activities and processes to get them what they want. They believe that what they want is out there, okay, and they can go get it for themselves. They believe that there is enough, if not a lot, to go around, and they can get their share. On the other hand, an individual with a scarcity mindset does not believe that there is enough to go around, does not believe in themselves and their abilities to go and get what they need or want. And as such, they stay stationary where they are with whatever they have. And they try to guard it tightly and live in this fear of losing it. Now, another thing about scarcity mindset versus abundant mindset is that people in a scarcity mindset tend to be fearful jealous envious scared uh, hateful you know the list goes on in terms of the negative personality aspects and a lot of it comes from this sense of just not being in control and you know, the fear of losing whatever little they have. On the other hand, when you talk to people that have an abundant mindset, they tend to be positive, they tend to be willing to help and lend a helping hand. They're people that educate and share in their knowledge and share in the things that they have been gifted in life or attained themselves. They help uplift people they don't put people down they are happy in other people's uh, success they look at people and they're happy for them when they succeed and it's just such a completely different mindset from a mindset of scarcity now why is it that some people have an abundance mindset versus a scarcity mindset so, the answer to that is, you know, it's a mix of genetics and environment. Genetics is basically whether you're born with a character or a personality disposition or a brain and physical chemistry that is positive or negative. And that is a real thing. There are some people out there that are more predisposed to be pessimistic and there are others that are predisposed to be optimistic. So genetics does play a part of it. But then the other part of it is the environment. If you had a lot of negative experiences in your life, a lot of losses, and um, 
a sense of loss of agency and control, you tend to become very pessimistic and develop a scarcity mindset. If, on the other hand, you had a lot of wins in life, uh, you always had your objectives and goals fulfilled with relative ease, uh, life has been very giving to you, you tend to have an optimistic uh, and an abundant mindset, okay? So with that said, does that mean that if somebody has a scarcity mindset that they're doomed for life? No. Uh, a lot of the times, people that have a scarcity mindset, they just lack awareness, okay? If you inform a person that perhaps a big contributor to your scarcity mindset is your genetic makeup, then at least they are aware that there is this predisposition that causes them down this spot, in, you know, that leads them down towards this downward spiral. Now, does that mean they're going to change their genetic makeup or they can do something about it? Uh, you can change your genetic makeup, but the awareness allows you to better manage your mindset, okay? Another aspect of it is that if an individual is aware that their scarcity mindset is the result of, let's say, lack of good information, then when shown the way to an abundant mindset, when provided with resources, tools, and information, they have control over that. They can actually go educate themselves or take the necessary actions that will shift their perspective from scarcity to abundance. Now, this is easier said than done, okay? Especially if you've had the scarcity mindset deeply ingrained over decades of your life, okay? And it could be, you know, again, we've talked already about the genetic aspect. There is the environmental aspect. The environmental aspect comes in the form of, you know, the um, ideology uh, or the way you've been raised up, uh, both in a family, household setting, in a schooling setting, in a religious setting, you know, compounded with the experiences you had in life growing up. So there's quite a bit to deal with here. And it's rather difficult for somebody stuck in this mindset to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And you can't really fault them, <laughs> especially if it's somebody that has this deadly combo of a genetic predisposition and a rather unhelpful environment, life circumstances, or negative life experiences. So what's the solution to transition from a scarcity mindset to an abundant mindset? Uh, first of all, recognizing that you are an individual with a scarcity mindset, which, again, easier said than done. It really requires uh, self-reflection, it requires self-awareness, it requires self-criticism, and it requires being able to face yourself, face your ego, and acknowledge and admit yourself and admit yourself your undercomings, okay? So that's the first aspect of it. Secondly, it's going to be seeking out information, okay, to help you out of this scarcity hole. Now, it can come in a lot of forms. It can be in the form of books, uh, doing searches online, watching uploads like this, uh, getting help from coaches, gurus, if you wish. Not a big fan of gurus, just because it tends to get very sketchy there. But a lot of the time, even uh, with them not being necessarily the, I guess, the, the the, the best people, they're still helpful, regardless of their intentions. Uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, there's a lot of resources out there to pursue, to help educate yourself. And 
I emphasize here that you need to pursue it and educate yourself because right after self-awareness and recognizing the problem, you need to actually take accountability for your own rescue. And you rescue yourself through your own education, pursuing this education and partaking in this process of changing yourself to the better. Next, you're going to want to actually have exposure therapy, okay? Or basically experiences that give you positive results, experiences that uh, prove to you the falsehood of the narrative of scarcity that you've been telling yourself in your head. Again, this is easier said than done because as you go through those experiences to change your mindset, you're gonna actually <laughs> experience a lot of uh, self-fulfilling uh, beliefs happening to you, self-fulfilling prophecies, because you have this ingrained pattern of thought and actions and at the beginning, trying to stir away from that is going to be difficult. So as you pursue this journey, you're actually going to get more of what you already know or you're accustomed to. And it might seem hopeless and it might seem that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. But if you stick with it long enough, all you need, all you really need is one positive experience, one abundance experience that will start putting chips in that scarcity framework so that's another thing you gotta stick with it okay you gotta endure the pain you have to endure the process there's no easy way out of it but once you do get the ball rolling on this you're gonna start seeing results very quickly um, so that's something to keep in mind And last but not least is that once you educate yourself, once you put yourself in a position where you experience abundance and positivity, you are going to have to work on it every day. Your scarcity became a part of your identity. It became... A solidified narrative in your thoughts because you made a habit of it so to ingrain positivity to ingrain abundance you're going to have to create a new habit and that's basically an abundance habit and you have to work on it every day you have to live it you have to breathe it you have to think it you have to experience it on a daily basis you're going to have to ingrain this new habit because all you're really doing is you're changing one bad old habit to a new good habit and over time you're going to have these changes take place um, within your mindset. Now, do keep in mind that this will be challenging. It will be difficult. And you're going to face a lot of internal and external resistance. Internal resistance from within yourself because, let's face it, you know, uh, there's a lot of comfort in misery even if it makes you miserable, right? Because change is harder than just staying in what you're accustomed with right even if it makes you miserable sad and depressed <laughs> that's how strong or how difficult change is is that you'd rather be in a depressed negative pessimistic scarcity mindset than change so you have to be aware that resistance is normal because you're changing your own life's paradigm you're shifting through the 
universal dimensions from scarcity to abundance and that shift is not going to be easy so you are gonna encounter internal negative resistance secondly you're gonna encounter negative external resistance I, actually i don't even know why i said negative it is already negative external resistance external resistance is gonna come mostly from the people around you that are accustomed to experiencing you in a certain way right anytime you want to change for the better you're gonna have people that are gonna try to discourage you from doing so sometimes it's because they're being malicious other times it's just because when they see you changing when they see you improving it's like you're holding up a mirror for them uh, in terms of what they can be but they don't want to take the responsibility or the accountability or put the effort to change to the towards the better just like you so be cognizant of that uh, also um, be aware that this is a a marathon it's not a sprint this is going to take a long time to achieve it's going to require patience it's going to require kindness towards yourself and it's going to require understanding particularly on days when you regress back because the thing about progress especially progress uh, while changing towards something better is that your progress isn't linear and constantly upwards but it's gonna be one day up one day down two days up one day down yeah change and progress can be an ugly process so you have to be aware of this and cognizant of it be kind to yourself be patient with yourself be forgiving of yourself especially for things outside of your control and talk positively to yourself talk to yourself the way you speak to others especially if you're always speaking encouragingly towards others but discouragingly towards yourself so just you know overall take it easy and be your own best cheerleader and i promise you i promise you things will change they might not happen overnight but eventually you will move from a scarcity mindset to an abundance mindset and something very uh, beautiful happens you know the world starts throwing opportunities towards you uh, it, it's funny how it works when you are not in a good place the, the world actually does not extend a helping hand it takes away from you all the help you actually need but when you are in a positive place an abundant place when you don't need the help or the resources all of a sudden you're being flooded by it it's such a counterintuitive thing but it's just how things work okay so yeah hopefully uh you guys this was helpful uh for some of you that are just struggling with a scarcity mindset or negative thoughts or pessimism or you're just beating yourself down and especially during these times <laughs> well it seems since 2008 really that we're constantly just feeling down in the dumps there's there's just no positivity there's always talks of recession and uh, economic downturns and there's layoffs everywhere and it's just you know hopefully this gives you some perspective uh, and recognize at the end of the day that um believe it or not it, it your outlook on life is a choice while you can't control everything that happens to you how you react to it and how you choose to proceed after events or things happen to you is a choice so choose to be abundant choose to be optimistic choose to be action oriented choose to see the best in everything and everybody even when people show you otherwise 
not for them, just for yourself, you know, for your own mental health and just for your own enjoyability of life. But most importantly, make sure to go out there and enjoy life with what you already have and have gratitude and appreciation for what you have. The more you appreciate what you have and the more grateful you are for it, you know, the universe ends up giving you more. Okay? All right, you guys. Hopefully this has been helpful. Um, if this did provide you with any insight or it has been, um, I guess, helpful again to any of you guys, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notification button so you are aware when I do uh, put up uploads and leave me a comment below. And uh, with that said, you guys, very much appreciate your time and attention. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.